What's up, spectators? Welcome back to the episode of Last Window. Last time, we primarily spoke with just Sydney and his daughter about their family troubles and trying to get him back with his ex-wife, and I think, yeah, that's just about the whole video. So, we were just gonna take a, a walk out of here, but... Hello again, Mr. Hyde. Hi, Sydney. Mr. Hyde. You were talking about the hotel the other day, weren't you? After you left, I remembered another story that may interest you. Another story? Would you like to hear it? Absolutely. Wouldn't miss it for the world. I thought you'd be keen, but not quite that much. Well, you know the elevator started working the other day, right? Yeah, apparently the repairs were all finished. That very elevator has been in use since this place was a hotel. It's a lot more temperamental than anyone would have know, would have you know. Sounds a little worrying. Actually, only yesterday I got trapped inside. You did? Well, there you go. It's a safety hazard and no mistake. The strange thing is, back in those days, it used to stop and start even more frequently. Even stranger still, it always stopped between the fourth floor and the roof. You should have heard some of the things the staff shouted when it happened. Of course it had regular work done on it, but always seemed to have problems. Nothing has changed then. Well, that's the real mystery. When this place was renovated, it started working perfectly. So I guess when it stopped with you in it, it was just your bad luck. Could well be. Alright, thanks Disney. Something that Sydney said has got me thinking. He said that there was a person who always attended the Scarlet Star parties. I think I need to find out a little more about that person. Hello there, Mr. Hyde. Mrs. Patrice, you wouldn't by any chance have any free time at the moment, would you? As a matter of fact, I would. There's something I'd like to ask you. And what might that be? Uh, I'd like to hear about your court case, or I'd like to hear about your husband. Why would you want to know about him? When we last spoke, you told me a little about your late husband. You said he enjoyed jazz music, and he even used to play the saxophone. That's right. I must confess, I am into jazz music too. I often listen to it in my room. The best kind of jazz always features the saxophone, don't you think? Well, if you say so. So, once I heard that your late husband played it, I instantly became interested. Would you be so kind as to tell me a little more about him? Why, certainly, since you asked so nicely. Please come inside. Mrs. Patrice? Your husband played the tenor saxophone. That's right. When did he start? As a pro, I mean. He was already part of an established band at the age of 20. So, he must have studied how to play it somewhere. Do you know where? He told me that he taught himself how to play. And that he was into jazz from the moment he was born. I doubt that. What kind of person was he? He was a real gentleman, both masculine and invigorating at the same time. These qualities guaranteed him a hit with the ladies. Humble brag. When did he throw in the towel and stop playing? I'm sorry? Well, he went on to run several eateries around town, didn't he? And he was a regular guest at the hotel restaurant here too, right? Who told you that, Mr. Hyde? Pfft. Not gonna rat up Sydney. Rat out Sydney. I found out all about him from an old newspaper article I got from the library. It was right there alongside one about your court case. It seems like you've gone to great lengths to investigate me, Mr. Hyde. Doesn't it? Tell me. Why is it that you've been investigating me? 
I told you I'm interested. I'm keen to learn more about the kind of stuff your late husband played. Not to mention about you, seeing as you're a widow, just like my mom. I see. So, you know everything it would seem. Ha, ha, ha. You would tell me what I want to know? I will. We're this close to parting ways forever. And you've chosen now to grow an interest in me. Perhaps it's fate. I'll answer your questions. I was suspected of murdering my husband. That was 13 years ago. When he and I were living together, our house was burgled one day. A burglar struck me and knocked me unconscious. When I awoke, my husband's body was laying lifeless beside me. In my right hand, I was clutching the gun that was used to kill him. I was framed by somebody. The evidence was more than sufficient for them to hold me as a suspect. But it seemed that fate smiled on me that day, and I was declared innocent. I wouldn't say fate smiled on you when your husband just died. You caught a break. Was the real culprit caught? No, they never found him, and though I was declared innocent, people will always remember the accusations. Mud sticks, or whatever the saying is. What you said about my late husband is quite true, Mr. Hyde. He was a regular face at this place when it was a hotel. On the day I was acquitted, I took control of the money my husband left to me and purchased the hotel. I wanted to own the place he held so dear when he was alive. And that, Mr. Hyde, is all this lonely widow can tell you. That appears to be the phone. Would you mind waiting here for me? Mags makes her way into the other room to answer the phone. Guess I'd better stay here until she's done. Now I think of it. I'm sure there's a photo of her husband around here. This picture has the signatures of George and Margaret on it. This must be a picture of Mags when she was younger. She's wearing a very uniquely designed necklace. There's a man playing a tenor sax in this picture. This must be George. This photograph is of two young women. Based on their clothes, they must be dancers. This is a pretty old picture. The door to the room opens and Mags walks in. I'm sorry to have kept you waiting, Mr. Hyde. It's no problem. I took the picture to, uh, I took the liberty of looking at the pictures on the shelf. Oh, these old things. When was the picture of you and your husband taken? Right after we were married. That necklace you see still gets worn today. It was a present from my late husband and is one of a kind. It is an impressive item, that's for sure. I love this picture of us more than any of the others I have. I'm sure your mother has one of her own that she values above the rest too. As Mags utters those words, I think to myself, Mom doesn't have a single picture of her and Dad. Not one. That picture hanging on the wall with the two women. Is one of them you? You're absolutely right. Can you tell though, Mr. Hyde? Tell me which one of them is me. You're the one on the right. I am indeed. Well done. Who's the woman in the shot with you? She was a dear friend of mine. A fellow dancer. Yes, it may be hard to believe now, but I was once a dancer. Ah. Oh. What's wrong? My head. It hurts. You okay? I'm sorry, I sometimes get like this. It's my reminder of the events that took place during that awful time 13 years ago. 
You'd better rest. I'll leave you in peace. That's very kind of you. But before you go, Mr. Hyde, may I ask a favor? Please keep what I've told you to yourself. I swear I won't breathe a word to anyone. Okay, time for me to be on my way. Indeed. I leave Mags's room. Seems she's had a somewhat colorful life. Can I speak to you? What's it about? You went to Mrs. Patrice's room, didn't you? Yeah, that's right. What did the two of you talk about in there? We talked about leaving. I see. Are you curious? No, not really. Anyway, I gotta be on my way. Dylan goes directly into Mags's room. It's my pager. I'd better head back to my room. Time to give Rachel a call. Red Crown, how may I help you? It's Kyle. I got some info for you on Jack Green. What did you find out? Well, his name appeared in the 1967 obituaries. It said that Jack Green, a 36-year-old reporter, died in a car accident due to major internal complications and blood loss. Did you see who he reported for? I did. It was Los Angeles Beat, the same place as Rex Foster. Were the two closely connected? Yeah, they were. They spent three years working together in the editorial department. And what's more interesting is, when Rex Foster quit his job, he quit just three weeks after Jack Green's death. After that, things really get strange. In what way? It turns out that Jack Green's final article was about the organized crime group, Condor. The title was, unsurprisingly, The Truth Behind Condor. It was actually the first part of a series, but Green ended up dying. So only the first part was ever published. I really need to get a closer look at that article, Rachel. Understood. I'll see if I can get a hold of a copy for you. I'm counting on you. There's something else that stood out too. It's about the area that the accident happened in. The location was along Route 971. I knew there was something familiar about the place, so I looked it up. It happened on a road between the Los Angeles Beat Company building and... Hotel Cape West. There seems to be a lot of factors that suggest this was more than a coincidence. You're right. Lastly, I got a message for you from Ed. He left me a message? He said that there must be some kind of clue that connects the guests. Who attended the regular parties held at the hotel and the Scarlet Star? That's all he told me. I see. I'll be in touch when I have more information. Jack Green died 13 years ago. He was writing an article about Condor. So also, the message I received from Ed. The one about the connection between the Scarlet Star and the party guests. Now I think about it, Sidney said something too. He'd always be around when the hotel was having an evening event. In particular, he always came to the parties they called Scarlet Star. Every month, Hotel Cape West would hold a party on a date with the number six in it. Those parties would be called Scarlet Star. The guests who attended the Scarlet Star parties, that's it. Maybe that photo album I found on the fourth floor can shed some light. <laughs> now, what am I looking for? Looks like your regular party. Mm, nothing really stands out. 
About anybody? Okay. Looks like a bunch of people sitting around. Okay, I- nope, go back. Really? Well, hello there, red dress. I know that necklace. Of course. That's the necklace Mags always has hanging around her neck. Which means this woman. It's Mags Patrice. Just as I thought. Mags is in the picture of the Scarlet Star Party. Looks like she's just earned herself another chat with me. Boo, 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 boo. Nope. Hey! Ah! Looks like somebody didn't want to be seen, am I right? <laughs> it's nothing. So you didn't hand back the spare key to 205 like you said you would, huh? That's right, I didn't. What were you doing in there, Charles? Come on, Charles, that would be... Quit stalling. Spit it out! What's the matter? Did I catch you up to no good? Kyle, would you just back off for a second? You have no chill. Get back in, so Really? We've got stuff to discuss. Kicks him in. Kicks him in the butt. Kicks the door in. Start shooting people. That's the kind of man Kyle is. Charles. Tell me. What were you up to in there? I can't say. Now you listen here, buddy boy. Were you up to no good? No, it's not like that. Why are you accusing me when you have no proof? If you're innocent, then you'll have no problem telling me what you were doing. That's not how privacy works, but sure. I told you, I don't want to. I'm not interested in telling someone who branded me as guilty on a whim. I'm not feeling very well. Please leave me alone. Wow, that was a great talk. Okay. I can't go without talking to Charles. What's he hiding? Really? Okay. Charles! I'm sorry I doubted you. That's okay. No, it's not. I should have been a little more controlled when you found me. I just can't believe you were so keen to keep it a secret. It's not that. I'm just a little shook. I was doing something I didn't want other people to know about. I'm embarrassed that you found me, Mr. Hyde. And then he goes to ask, Kyle is such a dick. What don't you want other people to know? I don't want them to know that I'm working on a script in here. For what? It's a screenplay for a movie, actually. And then he tells him, like, what kind of writing is this? I plan to enter it into a screenplay competition. And you're writing it in here. Why can't you do it in your own room? Don't ask me that. I come in here to do it because I want to make it more authentic. There's only a couple days until I have to submit it. Please, Mr. Hyde. Let me continue to use this room until then. 
Don't tell Mrs. Patrice. This is my one big chance. What do you mean by more authentic? Billy left his old typewriter in this room and I'm writing my screenplay on it. It's the key to making me look like a pro to the people who check the entries. Are you serious? Could you possibly make any less sense if you tried? The typewriter Billy left in this room. It's not a standard one, it's very special. He's now a top Hollywood screenwriter, but when he started out, he used this very typewriter. There's something very special about it, like it has some sort of power. That's why I'm using it to write my screenplay on it. I'm sure it's going to guarantee my screenplay will be successful. If it's the typewriter that's so special, can't you just take it into your own room? No, I have to write it in this room. What made you believe in all this superstitious stuff? That doesn't matter. What, is, what does matter is that I do believe and I must finish. Why is this your one big chance? Because if this screenplay doesn't make me successful, I'm gonna have to leave my university and return to France. Is that so? I made a promise to my grandfather. If I can't make a name for myself during my year here, I have to return home. Then I'll have to take over the family business. Does that sound strange to you, Mr. Hyde? Not really, I'm just surprised that someone of your class is living in a place like this. It's unexpected, that's all. Did you choose this place so you could study how other people live their lives? Or were you just curious about something? Neither. I searched for this place and decided I had to live here. You did? I wanted to use this building secret as a basis for my screenplay. What do you mean by secret, Charles? Well, Mr. Hyde, you know that there was an incident here, right? You know, back when it was a hotel. Did everyone know about this but me? What kind of incident was it? A murder. When this place was still a hotel 13 years ago, somebody was murdered here. So, he knows about the murder of Kathy McGrath. How come you know about that? I heard this story from my grandfather before coming to study here. He visited LA on a number of occasions in the past on business. He even stayed here a few times. He knew that on the final day of the building functioning as a hotel, somebody was killed. I was in awe of what he told me. When I came to LA, I investigated the place that was once the hotel, and discovered that not only was it now an apartment building, but also that the murder case had never been solved. So let me get this straight. You're basing your screenplay on the murder, and that's the reason you chose to stay here. Precisely. I see. Charles. As this means a lot to you, and it's your big chance at all, I'm gonna keep your coming in here a secret. Thank you, Mr. Hyde. I'm sure this is gonna become a wonderful story. The title is Door to the Past. It's about a murder inside a closed down hotel. The murderer is a member of the hotel front desk staff. He conceals the evidence on the fourth floor of the hotel. I've been using Mr. White from room 306 as my basis for the killer. Something about him fits the profile of a killer, don't you think? I'm sure he'd be thrilled to hear that. I suppose I won't know unless I ask him. Perhaps I can add you to the story too. There's still room for an accomplice. Don't even think about it. Come on, it'll be fun. Besides, I know what you've been up to. What does that mean? I know that you sometimes go up and have a look around the fourth floor. You're just like the bad guy in my story. What? Don't worry though. You're not the only person who likes looking around up there. I've been up there lots of times too. What the hell for? I started going up there a while back when I was looking for inspiration for my story. I took an 8mm camera with me and did some filming too. I caught something really interesting when I was up there. Yeah? What'd you tape? I'm sure you'd like me to tell you, so I'll make you a deal. If you tell me what you were looking for when you went up there, I'll show you the film. You got yourself a deal. Now, show me the film.
Wait, where is the film? Uh, do we go to his room? Wait, that's the vacant room. My room is on the third floor. Ah, yes. Thank you. And your room is... Oh, gosh. Did I just forget his name? 305. Thank you, French last name. So, this is Charles's room. Charles, show me the 8mm film you took on the fourth floor. I will, but don't forget our promise. You have to tell me what you're looking for when you go there. The same as you. I don't understand. I'm investigating an incident that happened here quite a while ago. That's why I've been spending time up on the fourth floor. The incident you're talking about, Mr. Hyde. When did you find out about it? I got wind of it not long ago. Just after I found out we'd all be leaving this place. I learned that something terrible happened here in the past. I mean, who would believe it? Uh, would you believe it? Just days before we'll all be out of here. I get caught up in an ancient case I know nothing about. So there you go, the reason why I've been going up to the fourth floor. Hmm, that's quite interesting, but there's one more thing I'd like to ask you. I haven't got all day, you know, kid. Why are you so keen on finding out about such an old case? I mean, I'm interested because I want to use it as a basis for my story. But what about you? I've always been the kind of person who enjoys solving problems. I used to be a detective, after all. You did? Were you really? Yeah, I was, up until four years ago. I guess the reason I'm so keen on this case has something to do with my detective's instinct. So now you're a detective salesman. I had no idea you were such an interesting person. If you don't mind, I'd like to hear more about your past next time. Listen, kid, I don't care if you find me interesting or not. My past is nothing special. You should stick to the unsolved case that happened here instead. Now, show me the film you took, Charles. Just a moment, Mr. Hyde. But we'll have to see that next time, because it's already been 30 minutes. So, stay tuned for the next episode. And thanks for watching. Bye-bye!